Here's another example. Please pause the video and try to figure out everything you can about this triangle. I've given you one side and one angle. Please try to figure out all the other sides and all the other angles. Let's use asterisks to keep track of the information that we were originally given. Uh, and now we can label, um, well, let's figure out this angle down here. Well, we know this angle plus this angle has to be 90 degrees. Uh, so this angle must be 90 minus 40, which is 50 degrees. 50 degrees. But I'm going to leave the asterisk here because the convention is that we usually keep focusing on the angle we were originally given, not the angle that we're figuring out. So, for example, now I'm going to label this side as adjacent because it's adjacent to the asterisk. And I'm going to label this side as opposite because it's opposite to the asterisk. And clearly the 3 is the hypotenuse. So just like on the previous problems, I've given you the hypotenuse and asked you to figure out the two legs. Of course, we already knew that this angle is 90 degrees because of this little box. All right, now we're going to use trigonometric functions. Now, clearly, we're going to try to use our number about the hypotenuse to figure things out. So we have to use the hypotenuse to figure things out. That means it's not going to be too useful to use the tangent, because the tangent doesn't involve the hypotenuse. We need to use trig functions that do involve the hypotenuse, like sine and cosine. So let's start with the cosine. If you wanted to, you could start with the sine, but I'm going to start with the cosine. So we have the cosine of 40 equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side we don't know but we know the hypotenuse is 3. And now we can use cross multiplication. 1 times the adjacent side just tells you the length of the adjacent side. And then we have 3 times the cosine of 40. And now again we know that if you need to find the adjacent side, um, you can say it's the hypotenuse times the cosine. So notice that to find the adjacent side, if you know the hypotenuse, you would use cosine. To find the adjacent side, if you know the hypotenuse, use the cosine. The adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine. Eventually, people get to the point where they skip these steps and they just write down this step. So you can write these steps down first, or if you're ready, you can just start skipping ahead to this step. 3 times cosine 40, we can do in one step on our calculator. That is 2.3 approximately. Anytime you figure something out, you should put it into your sketch. So the adjacent side has a length of 2.3. But I'm not going to put an asterisk here to remind myself that the 2.3 is not a number I was originally given. The only number I was originally given for a length was the 3. All right, now how are we going to find the opposite side? Well, remember that the convention is that we want to figure out the opposite side using the information that we were given about the hypotenuse. So we need a trig function that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. That's the sine. So the sine of 40 degrees is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. By the way, I hope that all of you are always writing down the angle when you write things down. I hope no one's writing something like this. This is horrible. This doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything to say that the sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. You have to say what angle you're taking the sine of. So you don't, don't write it down like this. Say the sine of 40. We have to write down the angle we're taking the sine of. So this is very bad. This is the way to write it. Uh, the opposite side, we don't know. The hypotenuse has a length of 3. We can cross multiply. 1 times the opposite side is just the length of the opposite side. And multiplying diagonally in the other direction, we have 3 times the sine of 40. We can use our calculator to find 3 times the sine of 40. That's 1.9. Every time you figure something out, you should put it into your sketch. 
Remember that eventually people get to the point where they don't write these two steps down, they just go straight to this step. Um, we can see from Sokotoa that the way to find the opposite side is to use um, the sine and the hypotenuse. Um, if you use the sine function, the hypotenuse, you can find the opposite side. The opposite side turns out to be the hypotenuse times the sine. And now we have all the information about the triangle. If this problem gave you any difficulty, I suggest that you redo it before you move on to the next problem. Please figure out everything you can about this triangle. Figure out all the other sides and all the other angles. I use asterisks to mark the information we were originally given. This angle we know is 90. We know the other two angles have to also add up to 90. So this angle must be 90 minus 45. Well, 90 minus 45 is also 45. Because 45 plus 45 is 90. So these two angles are equal. All right. So, um, of course, in this case, then it doesn't matter which angle we focus on because they're equal. Um, but just to be concrete, I'm going to leave the asterisk over here. So if the asterisk is over here, we should label this side as adjacent. It's adjacent to the asterisk, and this side as opposite. It's opposite to this asterisk. Again, in this case, that doesn't make a big difference because both angles are the same, but we'll just be systematic. And of course, we know that the 8 is the length of the hypotenuse. How do we know this is the hypotenuse? Because it's opposite to the right angle. Remember that the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite to the right angle. All right, now we're going to try to figure out the lengths of the adjacent and the opposite sides. Well, what are we going to use to figure that out? We're going to use this number 8. We're going to use what we know about the hypotenuse. So it would be futile to try to use the tangent, because the tangent doesn't refer to the hypotenuse. So the tangent wouldn't give us a chance to use this number 8. On the other hand, the sine and the cosine look like good bets, because they both involve the hypotenuse. Let's start with the cosine. If you wanted, you could start with the sine. Cosine of 45 degrees equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side we don't know, but we know the hypotenuse is 8. Now we can cross multiply. And we get that 1 times the adjacent side is the length of the adjacent side. And then multiplying diagonally in the other direction, we have 8 times the cosine of 45. The adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine. The adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine. Uh, and some people might skip these two steps and go straight to here. That's fine if you feel comfortable with that. Uh, clearly, you use the cosine to find the adjacent side and use the sine to find the opposite side, if you know the hypotenuse. 8 times the cosine of 45 is approximately 5.7. So I can say this adjacent side is 5.7. Now I need to find the opposite side. Well, I'm going to try to use the hypotenuse to find the opposite side. So I need a trig function that involves the hypotenuse and the opposite. That's the sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, so we'll take the sine of 45 degrees. That's the opposite side over the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here has a length of 8. We can cross multiply. 1 times opposite is just opposite. And then we have 8 times the sine of 45. The opposite side is the hypotenuse times the sine. And again, if, uh, if you, that was obvious to you, you could have skipped these two steps and gone straight to here. All right, then we can use our calculator to find the length of the opposite side, which turns out to be approximately 5.7. OK, now the way I did this was a little bit mindless. You really shouldn't have needed to go through all this work. Um, it should have been obvious all along that these two lengths were going to be the same, because this is an isosceles triangle. Um, anytime you have two equal angles, you have an isosceles triangle. Two equal angles means two equal sides. We haven't talked about that specifically. But two equal angles means two equal sides. 
So once we knew that these two angles were equal, we should also know that their two sides are equal. So once we knew that this side was 5.7, we could have known automatically that this side was 5.7. Um, we just confirmed that here using the official trigonometric approach.